mind? Is that doing anything for you? It's annoying me. You don't get an ASMR from it? I don't think that's how it works. You? ASMR? Um, yeah, but not, I mean. Oh, really? You get them? What does it? I mean, it's, it's not, it's, I don't know, it's random. Is it whispering? No. Guys, 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 guys. I'm, I'm just saying I've experienced it, okay? I just, that's it. Can we leave it at that, please? Please? Thank you. <sighs> oh. Okay, I knew it. Seriously? Oh, no, no, D come on. Jeez, that's not what, dude. Unreal. I'm not one to kink shame, but damn, dude. I told you something went wrong with him. I know, right? You're the one that farted. It's been called the tingles, whisper porn, even brain orgasms. And much like regular orgasms, some people just can't have them. At least that's what I've been told. By some girlfriends. It's called ASMR, and uh, if you've never heard of it, welcome to the internet. It's a sensation that people have probably been experiencing for thousands of years, but it was only after the internet came along that millions of people were able to kind of like look at each other and be like, oh, you too? ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, and it was coined by a woman named Jennifer Allen in 2010. She was part of a Reddit thread that was trying to get to the bottom of this whole phenomenon, and yeah, the name just kind of stuck. Um, it was a more clinical sounding name that was designed to you know, make it easier to talk about and also to make researchers take it more seriously. Not to mention to negate associations with you know, sexual fetishism, because um, it's, it's actually not a sexual thing, even though they do call it whisper porn and brain orgasms and you know, every search result you get. Dr. Craig Richard from Shenandoah University in Virginia is an ASMR expert and created an online resource called ASMR University. He's also the author of the book Brain Tingles, where he describes ASMR as, quote, a deeply relaxing feeling often accompanied by light and pleasurable brain tingles. It's often stimulated during moments of positive personal attention from a kind or caring person whispering, speaking, acting, and moving in a gentle way. It may be likely that about 10 to 20% of the global population is able to experience ASMR. Up until 2010, ASMR was sometimes called the unnamed feeling or weird head sensation and attention-induced euphoria. It was also called head tingles, head orgasm, and braingasm. A person going by the screen name Whispering Life uploaded the first intentional ASMR video to YouTube in 2009. The title was Whisper One Hello, and it consists of just a black screen and a, a lo-fi produced whispered recording of her talking about making an ASMR video channel uh, specifically for whispering. And since then, ASMR content has just exploded online. Uh, when researching this video, we did a Google search and it brought up 244 million videos. So you're watching the 244 million and first video ever made about ASMR. It's even making its way into mainstream commercials and films even. Hershey's actually released about a 90 minute online video called Reese the Movie in ASMR Experience in 2019. Yeah, they basically brought in five popular ASMR creators to just sit around a table in an orange room and uh, take turns whispering about the candy, along with, you know, crinkling its wrappers and eating the peanut butter cups. Michelob Ultra actually released a commercial during the 2019 Super Bowl that had Zoe Kravitz in it, kind of whispering into a microphone and tapping her fingernails. Well, you've seen it. Other brands using ASMR include IKEA, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Lynx, McDonald's, Renault, and Ritz Crackers. So yeah, it's, it's definitely become a thing, a whole thing, but 
how does this work exactly? Like what, what happens physiologically when you get triggered into an ASMR experience? Okay, so first of all, it, it is not experienced by everyone, but for those who do experience ASMR, it usually starts in childhood. Like you might feel tingles in your head when you were checked for lice or, or when fingers are running through your hair. Or maybe you felt tingles when somebody like runs their finger up your back. Um, which actually doesn't sound that weird to me. I mean, doesn't everybody get that? Other consistent triggers that a lot of people report are close personal attention, crisp sounds, delicate hand movements, soft speaking, soft touching, and whispering, or any combination of those things. But actually studying ASMR does, um, it does present some challenges. Like it's pretty hard for some people to actually, you know, kind of have this ASMR experience when they're in a clinical setting uh, for obvious reasons. And it's also kind of hard to determine whether or not people are having true ASMR experiences. But regardless, there have been a lot of studies that have been done over the years trying to get to the bottom of exactly what causes these things and what kind of commonalities there are in the personalities of people who experience them. Now, one obvious way to see what's going on in the brain would be to put people in an fMRI machine and see if they can have an ASMR experience in there. And that's exactly what Dr. Richard did with 10 participants in 2018. And what they found was that they did see a significant activation in areas associated with reward and emotional arousal. And they said that this uh, had similarities to patterns that are observed in what's called musical friction, uh, or also musical chills because of the chills down the spine sensation that some people get when listening to certain types of music. As Dr. Richard told National Geographic in March 2022, quote, the study showed that specific areas of the brain are active when somebody is experiencing ASMR. Some of these regions highlight the likely involvement of dopamine and oxytocin. Oxytocin is often called the love hormone or the cuddle hormone. It's something that we kind of release when we're feeling close to other people. And uh, yeah, apparently it turns out that behaviors that trigger oxytocin release are very similar to the ones that trigger ASMR. Oxytocin is also known for kind of creating feelings of relaxation and comfort, which are similar to ASMR feelings. Another study in 2017 focused on the default mode network of the brain. This gets a little bit in the weeds, but the default mode network is basically made up of several modules in your brain. And it's, it's kind of, it's on when you're not. Like if you're focusing on a task, you know, something external, then the network is less active. But if you're kind of relaxed and looking inward, thinking, um, being introspective, that's when it becomes more active. And in this study, they measured the DMN activity of 11 people who could experience ASMR, and then 11 people who can't as a control group. Uh, and they found that there was less functional connectivity in people who experience ASMR. In other words, all those different modules that make up the DMN had weaker connections in the ASMR group, possibly making it easier for certain sensory stimuli to kind of short it out. But they did find higher connectivity in certain parts of the brain that manage sort of executive control and then visual resting state networks. So to put all that together into some sexy science speak, the researchers suggest that it's possible that, quote, ASMR reflects a reduced ability to inhibit sensory emotional experiences that are suppressed in most individuals. In other words, it might be something that we all feel, but most of our brains kind of suppress that. The researchers in the study made sure to point out that this doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with people who experience ASMR. It's not like a mental disorder or anything. In fact, it might actually be helpful as a tool to cope with depression or stress. Speaking of coping, two studies published in PLOS One in 2018 looked into the physiological benefits of the ASMR experience, especially when watching the videos. One of these studies showed reduced heart rates and increased skin conductance levels and said that it could be, quote, a reliable and physiologically rooted experience that may have therapeutic benefits for mental and physical health. And the researchers were specifically adamant to note that both studies showed that ASMR is not associated with sexual arousal. As the researchers wrote, quote, this misconception may arise from the often interpersonal and intimate nature of some ASMR videos, but our research indicates that sexual arousal is not a reliable outcome of watching ASMR videos. The boobs and the thumbnails are just a bonus, I guess. Then there's a new study published in the Journal of Research and Personality in April 22 that focuses on sensitivity. The study looked at 500 people and showed that people who experience ASMR scored significantly higher on tests involving external hypersensitivity and body perception. But as one of the researchers pointed out, this does have a downside. It says, quote, highly sensitive people may be able to experience intensely pleasurable feelings like ASMR, but this high sensitivity also has its downsides. For example, the noise of a pen clicking or someone chewing gum could set off a negative reaction, which others would simply ignore. There is actually a term for what could maybe be considered the opposite of ASMR, which is misophonia. Uh, this is where you experience discomfort or disgust at certain sounds. Another study from February of 2022, there's a lot of studies that seem to be coming out this year for some reason, but anyway, it suggests that ASMR experiencers may actually have more neurotic behaviors and have more baseline anxiety than non-experiencers. 
This suggests they may be more prone to experiencing negative emotional states as well. Um, the good news that they say here is that it suggests that the ASMR experience can actually help mitigate that. And one last study worth mentioning is published in Frontiers of Psychology in 2017. This one focused on personality traits. They studied 290 ASMR experiencers along with 290 controls, and they found that the ASMR group demonstrated higher scores on openness to experience and neuroticism, but lower levels of conscientiousness, extroversion, and agreeableness when compared to the controls. In other words, introverts may be more likely to be ASMR experiencers. They said, quote, it may be that inward looking people are more likely to experience ASMR symptoms than more sociable outward looking people. Alternatively, the ASMR symptoms may lead people to be less sociable and more introspective. A little bit of a chicken and the egg thing going on there, but I can definitely see how people who might be hypersensitive to, to external stimuli uh, might prefer to be in more quiet and relaxed settings. So that's a lot of studies. What are we supposed to make of all this? Well, first of all, ASMR is non-sexual, really. And some people who experience it may have more anxiety than others, may be more introverted than others, but the experience is beneficial one for them to have. Also, another theory is that ASMR could be triggering memories from infancy. In fact, Dr. Richard thinks that the quality underneath almost all the ASMR videos is something of a tranquil womb-like intimacy. He believes that sounds like towel folding and whispering are more about like triggering the experience of being loved. Like when the study participants that he worked with were asked how they most prefer to experience ASMR, like outside of videos, they usually rank things like light touches with their eyes closed. Sound triggers were ranked second, visual ones below that. And he points out that interestingly, that's how our senses develop over time when we're infants. You know, when you're born, your eyes aren't fully working yet. You don't really have that sensation just yet. You're kind of, most of your information about the world is gained through touch. And parents often, you know, coddle and stroke their newborns to kind of connect with them. So ASMR could just be an experience of reliving your newborn time. Or as Dr. Richard told Smithsonian Magazine in 2017, quote, the reason people can get tingles and feel relaxed and comforted listening to Maria gentle whispering is because she's acting very much the way a parent would care for you, with caring glances, gentle speech, and soothing hand movements. This is kind of just classic pattern recognition, you know? Our brains recognize the pattern of somebody who cares and that comforts us, and it activates that oxytocin that makes us feel good. So maybe that's what it, it's all about when it all comes down to it, you know, just, just feeling loved and cared for. After all the studies, all the theories, all the debates around it, maybe it's just the really deep down universal human need to feel loved. So if you're into ASMR content and somebody tries to give you crap for it, you've got the perfect comeback. I just want to be loved. Is that so wrong? <laughs> so sound off in the comments. Do you experience ASMR? And if so, what's, what's your trigger? What sets it off? What does it for you? Um, or hey, misophonia, is there, any, is there any sound that you just can't stand? My little weird thing is that I can't stand the sound of when people wear like thong sandals and as they walk, the sandal kind of slaps against the bottom of their feet. I don't know why I can't stand it. It just makes me, ugh. But either way, if you enjoy a good brain tingle, I say go for it. You know what? Life is hard. Times are tough. Self-care is important. And part of self-care is eating right. That's where today's sponsor comes in. So over the years I've worked with meal kit companies where they send you the ingredients and the instructions and then you cook it. I absolutely love that. It's a nice tradition in our household. Um, it's something my wife and I love to do together. But the problem is you don't always have time for all that. Sometimes you just need to grab a bite and eat something. And if you don't have something ready to go, you wind up ordering some crap on Uber Eats and just paying three times as much for it. And that is why Factor exists. Factor delivers fresh chef prepared meals ready to eat in less than two minutes. So it's perfect for all you busy bodies out there. And speaking of bodies, it's super healthy. It's designed by dietitians. Each week you get your choice of over 27 meals and a variety of meal plans, including keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, and vegan options. They come fresh, not frozen, and it saves you the time of going to the store and it saves you money over delivery services. You know how every Sunday you're like, I'm gonna meal prep this week, I'm gonna eat healthy, I'm gonna run every morning, and then you just, you just, you do none of that. Well, we can't help you with the running part, but the meal prep part, it literally just happens for you. It just shows up at your door and then you put it in the fridge, heat it up later, ready to eat when you are. Plus there are tons of add-ons like proteins, juices, energy bites, veggie sides, even desserts. And having been a customer, I can tell you that it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice to just not have to think about the food, just heat it up and eat it. It tastes great, it's healthy. What's not to like? So if you'd like to give it a try, just head over to go.factor75.com slash joescott130 and use the code joescott130 to get $130 off across six boxes. I know that's, that's a mouthful. I've got it all down in the description, but if this sounds good to you, maybe you should get a mouthful of Factor. I think you'll like it. Um, 
more than that joke. Big thanks to Factor for supporting this video and a huge shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon and the channel members who are forming an awesome community, contributing in various ways that I can't even thank you enough for. There's some new members that have signed up and I need to shout them out real quick. We got Alex Georgiev, uh, Michael Villani, Aaron Jones, Will Cooper, Syntax, Latham Keen, Gordon Tyler, Margaret Geller, Nellie Milne, <laughs> King George VI, uh, Mark Johnson, Car Carters Eat Germany, Robert Burkhart, Alexander Verharen, uh, Arish T, Page in Space, Doofus Puncher, <laughs> Ken Arslan, uh, Jason Johns, and Julie Clark. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you would like to join them, you can get early access to videos, access to exclusive live streams, and you get a nice little thing, a uh, little icon next to your name in the, in, the, in the comments. It makes you stand out a little bit. Just click the little join button down below and you're ready to go. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe check out this video that's on a similar topic or any of the videos over here on the sidebar. If you're watching on your browser that have my little face in the thumbnail, give them a look. And if you enjoy them, um, I invite you to subscribe. I come back with videos every Monday. All right, guys, that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Stay safe, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care. Or should I say, love you guys.